Hey guys, Level Cap here, and today we're going to be reviewing the unlockable weapon and vehicle skins from the Battlefield 1 campaign. These skins are only unlockable in the single player campaign, but can be equipped for multiplayer gameplay for some epic style points. Now each skin has its own set of requirements and you aren't necessarily required to unlock them all since it can take a very long time. However, if there's a skin in particular that you think is worth getting, we will let you know how long it should take. There are six total weapon skins and one vehicle skin for the land ship. None of the challenges require you to play the campaign on a specific difficulty, so you can do all of them on easy if you want to save yourself some trouble. There's already some very helpful guides online that can point you in the right direction for the field manuals you need to collect and I'll leave a link in the video description. Now most of these skins require you to find all of the field manuals and complete all of the codex challenges for a specific mission. Let's start with the first one, Through Mud and Blood. In this mission we unlock the C96 His Lordship skin. It can take about 90 minutes to 2 hours depending on how fast you are. The skin itself is pretty unique in that it's only one of two pistol skins you unlock via the single player campaign and it features a cool looking all black style. It's certainly not the showiest weapon skin out there, but if you like something that looks a little bit more sleek, this might appeal to you. Now the hardest codex challenge for Through Mud and Blood has to be the stealth one for the second leg of the campaign, Fog of War. You have to sneak through three enemy encampments, eliminating all the guards as you go to guide your tank crew safely through the forest. If any of the guards go on alert with a red icon over their head, you failed the challenge. The yellow icon is fine as it just means the guards are investigating. Stealth in Battlefield 1 really isn't that hard to do once you've done it a few times through. Spotting basically gives you wall hacks and the lure you can toss to distract the guards is incredibly powerful. You can basically make the guards look and walk in whatever direction you want. Once you get used to the lure's radius, you'll be able to work the guards like puppets. Before you get to the second camp, there's a small weapons depot on the right just off the main road with two guards. Take them out and grab the suppressed pistol from one of the weapon crates in the depot. The second map has an underground bunker and you can use your lure to kill off the guards. Just use the pistol to headshot them as they come looking for you. The final camp can be a bit tricky, but it works just like the first two. Sticking to the outside and using the lure should make it easy to clear the camp out and complete the challenge. Now if you decide you've only got time to do one or two campaign challenges, I'd highly recommend the second one friends in high places. It takes about 90 minutes to beat if you go fast and unlocks one of the coolest skins in Battlefield 1, the straight flesh skin for the auto revolver. It features designs you'd find in a deck of playing cards and has a really nice worn brass finish. This is definitely one of those style points types of skins and it ties into the characters you play during the campaign. There's two challenges that took me a while to beat for this campaign. The first was No Man's Land Codex. This is the same kind of stealth mission as Fog of War so it was tricky at first but once you get the hang of it, it should be pretty straightforward. The second challenge took me at least five tries to get. Using the AA gun on top of a blimp, you have to take down 10 aircraft in 30 seconds. As soon as you can start shooting, there's a cluster of attack planes flying right at you. If you time your shots right and avoid overheating, this challenge should be quick to beat. But if you haven't beaten it in a minute or so, restart the checkpoint. After that first wave of attack planes, there's not much else to shoot down. The third mission, Avanti Savoia, features some of the easiest codex challenges to complete and took me around an hour. The skin you unlock for the Seirogodi unfortunately isn't that interesting. It features some nice engravings and detail work, but overall really doesn't stand out like some of the other campaign skins. It also doesn't help that the Seirogodi is one of my least favorite weapons for multiplayer, so I probably won't be using this very much at all. When you start the second part of this campaign, just pull out your pistol and you should have no problem getting the 10 kills you need to beat the codex challenge for it. The challenges for this mission are so easy, you don't even really need a guide for any of it, it's just very straightforward. Now the fourth campaign, The Runner, takes about 90 minutes and is another pretty easy campaign to complete the challenges for. Doing so unlocks the Frontiersman skin for the Howda pistol, which is the gun you need to find to complete the Drip Gun Codex for killing 10 enemies with a sidearm in the second part of the campaign. It's cool that the skin is kind of an easter egg slash hint for how to unlock it, and visually, although it's kind of a more refined skin, I really like the look of it. It reminds me of like an old fashioned dueling pistol. And in fact, it's a pretty fun sidearm to use when playing the assault class in multiplayer. Now as for completing the challenges, at the start of the mission, head to the farmhouse out in the field to the left of town. Outside it, you'll find a weapon crate with the how to pistol in it. Use it to mow down 10 enemies and you're good to go. If you're having trouble with the River Clyde Codex, like I did, it's because you have to get 5 kills with grenades you start with, not the ones you pick up from weapons crates. 
The easiest way to do this is to alert the guards at the start of the mission and head behind the building. In about 30 seconds, you should have a mob of enemies standing around you. Toss a couple of grenades at them and boom goes the challenge. Battlefield 1's final campaign, Nothing Is Written, took me about two hours to complete and unlocks the Desert Dweller skin for the Russian 1895 Sniper. It's another kind of subtle skin, but the weathering details on it are really well done. This kind of relates to the campaign since you're playing a character who probably would have gotten her weapon secondhand. If you like skins that have a use feel to them and like sniping, this is for sure a skin worth getting, especially since the Russian 1895 Sniper is a really good sniper rifle in multiplayer. Unlocking it takes you through the final two stealth challenges of Battlefield 1's campaign. Hidden in plain sight has you searching a train wreck for a code book. You can sneak past almost all of the guards to complete the Bedouin Codex challenge. Just take out the one right in front of you when you start, head down to the left towards the weapons depot, and then you head up the train that's propped up like a ramp. The last guard in your way will be patrolling the hatch at the top of the train you need to get in. Killing him shouldn't alert nearby guards. Once you open the hatch, you're home free. The final mission in this campaign, Here the Desert, has probably the trickiest of the stealth challenges. Right at the start, mark all the armored trucks and head to the weapon depot on the right. Grab the silent sniper rifle and dynamite in it and take out the guards on the water tower. Once you've picked off the two guards closest to the armored truck, sneak down and toss a dynamite charge under it. Rinse and repeat for the other two trucks and then blow them all up at once. On my first attempt, I had one of the trucks not blow up on my end and had to redo the whole mission. So make sure you get the dynamite under the truck and not just near it. Now there's another skin that you can get from the campaign simply by beating the campaign and watching the outro sequence. You will unlock the trench cleaner skin for the M1909 machine gun. This skin adds a brass colored barrel and a a gun body with some extremely cool engravings. On the side of the weapon it says go forward or die. There's a bunch of Harlem Hellfighter skins in the game and this is one of them as it's clearly labeled on the stock of the gun. The barrel has 369th engraved on it which was the Hellfighters Regiment composed of African Americans and Puerto Ricans. It's definitely a cool weapon skin and one of the easiest to get since all you have to do is complete the campaign. Now if you unlock all the skins in the campaign you will get the final campaign skin which is the Black best landship skin. This one is some serious swag and will definitely make you stand out in multiplayer. It's proof that you poured some real hours into Battlefield 1 single player and I doubt you'll see it too often in multiplayer games. The skin makes the multiplayer landship look like the one that you drive through the mud and blood campaign. Considering how badass the landship looks to begin with, the black best skin is just the icing on the cake. And although you can get some gray skins for other tanks in the game, this one is the only one that's solid black and it it definitely stands out, or maybe not so much if you're playing on a darker map. Now unlike Battlefield 4, there's no custom weapon unlocks that you get through the campaign uh, that give you some sort of tactical advantage. These are purely aesthetic upgrades, but some of them are definitely cool. Now what I like about the unlock process here is that you don't have to unlock everything, and if there's only a few skins you want to go for, you can just go for those ones individually. One of my favorites is the straight flush skin for the auto revolver. This is a medic only sidearm, and it's actually an incredibly good sidearm, so I'll probably end up using this in multiplayer a lot. Anyway, that pretty much wraps it up for the custom unlocks you can get from the single player campaign. Let me know what you think in the comments. Are there any of these skins that you're going to be going for in particular? As always, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.